So this is going to be a really important video for you if you are wanting to become an ethical hacker or a bug bounty hunter because I think this is going to be the best way for you to learn a bunch of different exploits and actually be able to become a well-rounded ethical hacker and know what you're looking for and where to find vulnerabilities. Sometimes you're going to see people say that if you want to practice your hacking skills, go and do bug bounty programs and then just read everything that you come across. And this can be helpful sometimes, but you're not going to be learning new exploits because you don't know that they exist. And this is why I prefer for CTFs over blind bug bounty hunting, especially if you're new and you're a beginner. I would say that practicing in CTFs is gonna be better than going to any kind of college or even doing some kind of certification because often the college route only focuses on service level exploits and the certification route is going to be basically you just doing CTFs anyway with very little to no help. I think you're gonna get better communication and help from some kind of form within the CTF community. And so really, practicing in the CTF world is going to be better than practicing in some kind of certification. I remember when I first started, I really wanted to sign up for a certification and have some kind of guided learning. And I was really shocked at how little help you actually get. And you basically get handed some kind of training videos, something to read, and then you're set free to go do capture the flag within their own environment on your own anyway. And these certifications can cost a lot of money. And some CTFs like Port Swigger are free. Try Hack Me and Hack the Box are very affordable compared to these certifications and if you have questions you can usually ask inside of forms and you're gonna learn a bunch of different ways to pull off a single vulnerability on one capture the flag event and so that is number one they're gonna be the best place to learn and to grow in your ethical hacking knowledge and number two this sounds very self-explanatory but when somebody tells you that you need to go out on a bug bounty program and just start looking for bugs you can't find a bug if you don't know that it's there you might be looking directly at it but you don't know how to exploit it and you don't even know the name of it and capture the flags are going to be the place where you learn about these new bugs and you learn how to exploit them and you can ask questions if you have any questions you might say well I'm very interested in only learning how to hack on Android devices and the good news for this is there are specific CTFs designed just for that there are CTFs designed for web applications network penetration testing mobile testing and basically anything else that you could possibly want to hack and you're able to choose whatever you're interested in and focus just on that specific area and become really good or even a master in that one specific area. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. By just focusing on CTFs in that area and learning all about your interests and how to exploit them. And one of the best things about a CTF is if you get stuck, you can actually go and look for walkthroughs. You can ask a community in a form for help and you're going to be able to finish the CTF and you're going to learn along the way and often there is more than just one way to complete the CTF. So what I realized then there are many different ways of being clever. And you can go and read about how other people exploited that specific vulnerability. And something similar to this in the hacking world is to go and read the activity on something like the HackerOne website. But you're not actually able to go out and practice those specific exploits because it is a live program and they want to get it fixed. So in the world of Capture the Flags, after you finish the lab, you can actually go and look at how other people did it. And you can practice multiple different ways to solve just one specific lab. And this can be really helpful and increase your learning much quicker. And you're actually able to practice practice, which means it's going to become ingrained into your memory a lot better than just reading the activity. Another bonus from CTFs is it creates a sense of persistence. You know that the machine is vulnerable and sometimes you can spend hours or even a day sitting there looking for a specific vulnerability because you know that the machine is vulnerable. And in the world of bug bounty, sometimes I have a limit that I will spend no more than three hours looking for a specific bug or trying to get it to exploit because I could be just wasting my time because it's not vulnerable. And in the world of capture the flags, they are vulnerable and you just need to figure out how to exploit them and so you can spend a significant amount of time and you actually get that hacker mentality of spending the time and perseverance in pulling off the exploit. And so one of my favorite things about Capture the Flags is you can create some kind of competition. Competition actually will help you. It'll make you be motivated to want to continue practicing and to want to get better. So I would encourage you to sign up for a competition several months down the road. Already spotted 
the code injection button on the sword helmet function, right? I never thought of that. Dude, just let him on. It can be one just online, you don't have to go in person, and it can just be a simple competition where you're gonna try and exploit some labs and gain some points just for fun, but having some kind of competition set in the future, you're gonna wanna do as best you can, especially if you're a competitive person. This is gonna motivate you to continue practicing. And so in the world of Capture the Flags, there are competitions all the time, and I would encourage you to sign up for one of these competitions, and that will help keep you motivated and to continue doing Capture the Flags and learning as many exploits in your specific area of interest as possible. I like to spend at least six hours a week if I can doing Capture the Flags. I believe this really helps better my skills because I am learning constantly about things I didn't know. And actually when I first started out, I had told myself I need to set a nearly impossible goal for myself to say, okay, when I reach this level, then I can take a break. And so what I did is I set my level and saying when I'm as good as Doggy G or Ipsec, then I can relax and take a break from learning and practicing on CTFs. In other words, I was telling myself when I was as good as Lionel Messi or LeBron James, then I could take a break. And this goal is so outrageous that I don't think I'm ever gonna reach it. And this will help keep me motivated saying, this was my target goal, I'm not there yet, and I just have to keep working towards it. And so for you, you may not want to set an impossible goal like I did. You can set a goal that is out there, one that's gonna cause you to have to strive and to learn and to continue persevering for, but this competition setting for me seems to work really well. And so I hope I have convinced you that doing Capture the Flags is going to be the best way for you to practice and learn no matter what area of cybersecurity you're interested in. A few places that you can practice if you're interested in web applications, you can try Pentester Lab, you can do a Port Swigger, which is free. If you're interested in like complete penetration testing, you can sign up for Try Hack Me or Hack the Box. I think these are going to be the best places for you to learn and to better your skills. Thanks for watching.